Greetings everyone, update 31, the new war is live in Warframe on all platforms and you can now play the new war quest. That's right, it's finally in the game. You must first have to have completed every mainline quest up to and including the prelude to the war, which is the three cutscenes that were released over the course of 2020. You must also own a Necromech and a Railjack. Digital Extremes have said the following regarding the quest. The new war will take several hours to complete and will prevent normal Warframe activities from taking place for the duration of the quest, so plan accordingly. Access to your loadouts will be limited, so we encourage you to not only prepare your Warframe, Necromech, Operator and Railjack loadouts, but also your Fashion Frame, and as always, crank that audio and dialogue. You may also notice your Operator sounds a bit different while playing the new war quest. We hope you enjoy the updated Operator voices, pre and post new war Operator voices will be the familiar ones you're accustomed to. Additionally, a new access setting has been added titled Hold Button for Struggle Action. This allows you to choose either hold or tap when confronted with a struggle context action where typically bashing of a button would be requested. We recommend that you put this setting to your preference before initiating the new war quest to ensure you have the best experience. Players can also turn this on in the controls options menu at any time in the quest just above the Arcwing section. The also clearly stated that you cannot replay the New World Quest once it has been completed, however it is a potential 2022 edition, so take your time and they hope you enjoy it. We've also said that there are five new weapons available after the New War, and they do not have them in the patch notes to avoid spoilers. I will be covering them in where to farm videos if you do want them, but besides that I won't be covering it in the patch notes. Moving on we have the new Warframe Caliban, whose base blueprint you can purchase in the market while his his components can be acquired via bounty missions that are unlocked after the completion of the new war quest. Once again, more information will be released by me in a where to farm video just to not spoil anything in the patch notes. They've also said that Caliban's Prex card can also be found after completion of the new war quest at a new location. If you want a video in regards to that, I will make one, but yeah, it's a Prex card, so it's up to you guys. Now Caliban, his passive is adaptive armor. Allies within affinity range gain up to 50% resistance to the types of damage they are currently taking. Note that this does not stack additively with the adaption mod. Razor Gaia is the first ability Become a spinning vortex of death. Hold the attack button to accelerate the maelstrom increasing damage or target an enemy by tapping the attack button to dash towards them and hitting enemies inflicted with sentient wrath creates a destructive blast. Sentient wrath. Smash the ground, sending out a radial wave of destruction. Those not killed by the initial blast are helplessly lifted into the air, where they take amplified damage for a short time. Sentient Wrath is Caliban's Helmet Subsume ability for those who utilize that system. Lethal Progeny. Call on Caliban's Sentient Aspect to reduce up to three conculus to fight by his side and repair his shields. Lastly, we have Fusion Strike. Converge three streams of raw energy upon a single point causing a massive reactive blast. The fallout from the blast will strip the armor and shields from all enemies that touch it. And they have noted that don't miss Caliban's noble and agile animations featuring our first male presenting Warframe with a floating animation. So that is our new Warframe. We also have his signature melee weapon, the Venado. Caliban's signature scythe forged from a limb wrenched off a fallen Eidolon centuries ago. It has 50% increased melee combo counter chance when wielded by Caliban. He also comes as part of his collection if you want to get that with a Sindana Sugatra and an alternate helmet. You have the Sindana up on your screen right now, the Sugatra, and now the alternate helmet. And there are also new additions that are unlocked after the completion of the new war quest, so do keep that in mind. Moving on, Harrow Prime is now available in game. His Prime access has launched on all platforms. Obviously, it includes Harrow Prime. It also includes the Scourge Prime and Nell Prime. As for the accessories, you can get the Knave Prime Cyan Dana and the Templar Prime Operator Suit. Now, in relation to the Prime Access launch, we have, of course, new Riven Disposition changes. I have covered that in an individual video to save time in the patch notes. There's card up on your screen and link in the description if you want to listen to that. But also in relation to the Prime Access launch, we have Ivara Prime, Baza Prime, and the Aksumati Prime entering the Prime Vault. Digital Extremes have stated that the Prime Resurgence event is currently running, and these Prime items will not be added to the run of the Resurgence schedule as 
they are not including 2021 vaulted items in the event. In relation to this, the syndicates have had a shuffling of their sacrifices. The parent sequence sacrifice of Baza Prime stock has been replaced with a Panthera Prime receiver, and the parent sequence sacrifice of Ivara Prime systems has been replaced with Octavia Prime's chassis. Lastly, for Red Veil, its sacrifice of Ivara Prime's chassis has been replaced with Nezha Prime's chassis. Now, a part of the game changes, and alongside the launch of Harrow Prime Access, we do have a few changes to Harrow himself. For his passive, Harrow and Harrow Prime now have the preparation style mod behavior as a passive, meaning that Harrow now has plus 100% maximum energy on spawn. For the Condemn ability, the radius growth now scales with range, and they've added a non-scaling area of effect around Harrow that gets hit by it, similar to Protea's Blaze Artillery, to address hitting enemies that are right on top of you. For Penance, they've added an initial burst of healing based on Sacrifice Shields, and Thurible, they've increase the charge rate. Moving on, we have a legendary rank 2 notice. This is for people who have gone past mastery rank 30 for those who do not know. While we have enough content to achieve legendary rank 2 in this update, we are postponing the ability to perform the test until 2022. This decision was not made lightly. We simply did not feel we could perform necessary testing to release it in this build. Now we do have new cosmetics with update 31. The first set is that of the Protovia Cosmetics. Digital Extremes have said the following. Available in the in-game market for Platinum, featuring a new evolving cosmetic set, the Protovia, a first of its kind cosmetic that permanently evolves as you complete the required tasks. The Protovia Armor chest, shoulder, and leg. Defeat sentient enemies with this armor equipped to unlock two additional looks. You also have the Proto Via Cyan Dana, and to upgrade this to two additional looks, you have to collect relics and ire with the Cyan Dana equipped. For the Proto Via Ephemera, you must earn focus with the Ephemera to unlock the two additional looks. Digital Extremes continue. How the Proto Via Cosmetics work. Each cosmetic tier is permanently unlocked and available in your arsenal as its own unique attachment once the required task is complete. Starting at the Proto Via tier, followed by the Proto Via Emergent tier, and the final Proto Via Apex tier. Progress towards each tier is saved and can be returned to at any point. Progress can be tracked through the arsenal description of the cosmetic and in-mission UI pop-ups. And we also have, separate to the Protovia cosmetics, the Mesa Projectila skin, which is Mesa reimagined as the sentience would have designed her, and the Vault Electrola skin. It is Vault as if he had been created by the sentience. The Curalist sentient skin is also available for those who enjoy customizing their sentinels. Give your sentient the appearance of a Curalist, diminutive sentience that evolve to become robust laborers in the tower system. And lastly, the Namir Shorzen is available as well. Moving on, we have new decorations. 11 new dojo decorations and 13 new orbiter decorations have been added with this update. These new decorations are all based on the new war quest and therefore you can check them out once you've finished the quest. Three new community made displays have also been added to the game. These can be purchased with Platinum individually or as a part of the new war community art pack in the market for Platinum. Moving on, we have more changes to the new player and early player experience. DE have said the following. In a continued effort to increase the accessibility of main quest related items, we've reduced Voxelaris sacrifice requirements. Those starting out on the Voxelaris journey should find this allows them to progress through the Syndicate faster to reach the higher tier offerings. So starting from the lower tier and moving up, we have rank one operative. The Colder Toroid, Vega Toroid, and Solar Toroid requirement has gone from two to one. For rank two of Agent, the Vega Toroid requirement has gone from 10 to five, and the Gyromag systems has gone from 15 to eight. For the rank three, the Hand, the Colder Toroid, and Atmos systems has gone from 10 to five. Rank four Instrument, the Solar Toroid has gone from 10 to five, and the Repeller systems has gone from five to three. Three. Lastly, rank 5 Shadow, the Charisma Toroid and Repeller systems have gone from 5 to 3. Now we have general game changes. Digital Extremes follows. We have changed the skip cinematic confirmation when playing Quest to a hold to confirm instead of just clicking OK. This is aimed to save players who accidentally skip cinematics from button mashing, which could heavily hinder the Quest storyline experience. This change does not affect regular gameplay cinematic skipping, aka mission flying, drop down, etc. Companions will now receive 100% of the affinity from kills you make, and this 
matches shared affinity functionality in that you receive 100% and your companion receives 100%. They have moved the ghoul bounty ire drop to the final phase as opposed to being in a majority of the phases. They've updated the operator voice icons to better reflect their titles. And you may have already noticed this upon login, but emails displayed on the login screen will now always be censored, regardless of having creator mode enabled or not. Your email will display only the first and last two letters before the domain with the letters in between censored as asterisks. Additionally, we have updated the login email lock icon hover text to read unlock and clear email to clarify its function. Creator mode does still censor the entire email if you want that and the email domain is not censored by default, but if you want to hide the email domain, you can use creator mode. Moving on, they've moved the K-Drive race objective markers down closer to the actual K-Drive instead of floating many meters above. They've increased the back away distance for Grenier Lancers finding cover so that they can shoot for longer. Enemies are now more likely to throw grenades at a target in cover. They've removed the Tenant Livia, primary kit gun beam based weapons, the Cadus and Volnus Prime from the Conclave with a note that these new weapons slipped into the Conclave without a proper balance pass. They set max instances on Mirage's Eclipse loops so they don't multiply out of control when Hall of Mirrors is used. They've adjusted the Grenier Rampant context action offset to prevent clipping with the mesh. AI cover positions have been tweaked to be more consistent. The Brachiolus will now take damage when disarmed instead of equipping Electro Prods. Decals on Harrow's Condemn now uses deferred rendering for better performance. They made slight adjustments to the Spirit Sail Prime chestplate when equipped on Nidus. Rescue targets are now far more unlikely to go after an AFK player over an active player. The Juno Germanax Mowers projectiles AOE damage now respects line of sight and won't deal damage through cover. They've changed the Dojo Oricon Lab description to void focused research to remove outdated solar rails indication. The quest codex section is now ordered based roughly on intended order of progression with the quests you have yet to complete remaining at the top of the list for ease of access. Lastly, for the general changes, shading improvements have been made to older hair materials to add more depth. For the game's overall optimizations with update 31, the new war, DE made micro optimizations to reduce hitches in DirectX 12 when using the enhanced graphics engine, optimized severe stutters that could occur in DirectX 12 on PC in some situations, optimized the railjack HUD, performance related to noggles, micro optimizations to memory footprint, systemic micro optimizations to level loading, they optimized several aspects of transmission updating, made system micro optimizations for PC, Xbox and PlayStation, and they optimized small stutters that could occur in DirectX 12 on PCs with fast SSDs. For the game's overall fixes, DE fixed companions not receiving shared affinity from other players when you are in a necromacal operator, a script crash in the wall within quest when transferring to the operator, an inability to proceed in the junction spectre fight if you died at the exact moment the spectre also perished, a spot load that could occur shortly shortly after an enemy Kuvalich spawned, a fixed steel pass hijacked escort object having normal level health, enemies struggling to target the hijacked escort target, junction specters of normal level when attempting to complete it in the steel path, client players seeing mission failed screens after leaving railjack between missions, they fixed transferring between the operator and warframe in the index, duplicating the financial stress debuff, an issue with spot loading Arcwing, K-Drive, Necromax, etc. when returning to the orbiter, aka the loading screen when returning to the ship as it would freeze while fading out. They fixed being able to ragdoll yourself through the Cambian Drift doors using the K-Drive, Titania Solstice skin missing the Prime Details Noggle, the Hit effect missing the Heck and Sobek, Aya dropped in open zone bounties having stretched icon images, players not taking damage over time outside of a purifier bubble if the armor is 0% in infested salvage missions. They fixed Ureli being able to enter Orphix fields by riding into it on her maroon. Yes, I know that's wrong. Thank you for leaving it in the comments, but I couldn't be asked trying to change my mind over the pronunciation of that word. Anyway, they fixed the operator energy circle in the bottom right of the screen being grayed out, being unable to install the former you purchased from the Arsenal Warframe upgrade screen. They fixed locked Nightwave Axe showing how to instructions for completing the act with a note that only unlocked acts will show how to instructions to avoid spoilers. They fixed script errors when opening prime research 
Divergence schedules from Vazia's wares, mind controlling a thrall as Nyx, preventing it from being killed by a melee finisher. They fix missing button callouts to move the mouse or joystick left, right, while rotating a decoration, with a note that when the left button rotates a decoration, you now get a hint to move the right stick left and right, similar to when scaling, and you get a hint to move the stick up and down. They fix clients joining host missions, not seeing pickup resources after a host migration, Gauss's gauge and red line having a puffy smoke effect around it, an issue where clicking the plus icon in the squad panel while in the solo mode would give you two error pop-ups. They fix the vacuum type mods, that being either Sentinel or Companion Base, not working all the time, if clients playing Ureli are riding in Marulina. They fix being ejected from the K-Drive and falling through when driving into the map border of the Plains of Eidolon when over water. A script error with the Terrorlist. They fixed an issue with transmission, sometimes being inaudible. Script errors with the Errorless projectiles. An issue where boss fights can be triggered while the player is out of the room as the operator locking them out of the fight. Animation issues where enemies would switch back and forth if you shot at the ground near them. They fixed being able to dodge trading zone restrictions in Maru's Bazaar around Vazia by jumping. They fixed spot loading from generating Kuvalich weapons from Larvlings in missions. They fixed the Dojo Decorate Mode HUD Legend, only shot Showing two options if open through the dojo console rather than the menu. Missing Tenno guide prompts after some quest stage completions. Script errors when duplicating decorations. Several armor attachments clipping through Nidus's Cavale Scrounger skin. A harmless script error that could occur when fighting the Exploiter Orb. A script error that could occur if you caught a fish soon after a host migration. Deimos Claw skins appearing incorrectly in mission when equipped to the Keratinos. The Arcwing loadout preview not functioning after changing in necromancy weapon, juggernaut stomp attacks no longer spawning new enemies, an inability to place decorations properly on the codex table in the orbiter, a flickering glass texture in one of the corpus outpost spy windows of the central tower when viewed from the doorway into the room. The Chains of Harrow quest on the Corpus ship tile set being overly dark, an inability to view the Railjack mods, Worms, Torrent, and Grenham's Nemesis in the Codex, Stalker spawning in a junction and pushing you outside of the level, disarming an enemy who is held by Zaku's gaze, Loki's radial disarm, Baruch's desolate hands, and Serene Storm, Naramon's disarming blast, Mag's magnetized discharge augment, or Kubral neutralized, resulting in them counting as a required kill for mission progress. They fixed multiple issues when rapidly clicking quests in the codex, syndicate relic packs incorrectly stating a guaranteed rare as it was pulling the description from the market relic pack, they fixed the Nightwave Act description for Day Trader claiming only one win is required when in fact it's three, and lastly for update 31 the new war, to fix Titania's Razorwing kills in normal ground missions counting toward the form on higher challenge progress. It is 29 degrees in my room, it is very fucking hot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.